old Pete's some fairy tale type thing, tape two. Gather round, children. Old Pete's gonna tell you a fairy tale. Now, I don't remember much about the fairy tale, so I've written it down as best I can remember, so don't go complaining if it's not exactly the way you're used to hearing it. This is a tale of a little girl. She went off into the woods one day to deliver her dear old granny some bread and some cheese and some wine as an and an apple. Her name was Susan, but everyone called her Little Red Riding Hood on account of the Little Red Riding Hood she wore every day since she was 12. Frankly, it was starting to get a little small on her. But back in the old days, people had to be thrifty and they didn't change clothes so much. Why, you could tell who anyone was just by looking at what they were wearing, which was a real boon to those of us who don't remember faces so good. I remember back when Mountain Mike had his trusty flannel torn to shreds by Bobcats. He had to get a new shirt and I didn't even recognize the man when he said hello. Anyway, Little Red, she sets off to her granny's house, and along the way she meets up with a wolf who asks her where she might be going. Now Little Red, trying to avoid snacking on her granny's meal, well, she had been eating some random forest mushrooms to stave off her hunger, and let me tell you, a talking wolf was the least of her problems at that moment. But just in case he turned out to be real, she kept a good grip on her wood cutting axe, and she told him she was going to go visit her grandmother to bring her a meal, and that her grandmother lived just up the road just a few miles and the wolf deciding that a frail old woman would make a much better meal than a hopped up young woman with an axe sped off down the road in search of the grandmother's house well along the way he met up with a parade of armed fellows who drew their weapons as he approached no need for hostility said the wolf i'm just passing through just then, out of the gilded carriage came the emperor, naked as the day he was born, and he implored the wolf. Good wolf, he said, I have come into a possession of clothes that only the wise can see, and you, being a humble creature of the forest, can you observe them? And the wolf says, as a wolf, I confess that I cannot. Would you be willing to part with your old clothes since you are no longer in need of such paltry things? since you have come into possession of such finery. And the emperor said, so be it. And so it was that the wolf came into possession of the emperor's old clothes, dressed himself in them, and hurried towards the abode of Little Red's grandmother. When he arrived, he was surprised to find that the cottage was made of gingerbread. Inside, he could hear someone talking. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? And a voice answered, Little Red Riding Hood. And the first party said, damn right, my granddaughter's a treasure. The wolf knocked on the door and he saw the light from the people darken. Who is it? It's the emperor. The emperor? But what big ears you have. The better to listen to your rhapsodious voice, said the wolf. And what big eyes you have. Oh, the better to behold your beauty. And what a big mouth you have. And I'll not tell you what the wolf said since it's not appropriate for children. Anyways, the grandmother appreciated his offer, but since she disagreed with his policies on the subject of witchcraft, she was disinclined to let him in. So the wolf, he went to plan B. He huffed and he puffed and he tried to blow her house down. But you don't build a house out of gingerbread without being up on the latest construction techniques and buttercream frosting recipes. The house stood strong, so the wolf decided to simply eat his way in. He chomped, he gobbled, and he scoffed, and he ate that entire gingerbread door. But you do not simply eat an entire gingerbread door and have room left for dessert. He and the grandmother stared each other down for a few seconds, and she decided she'd had quite enough. She grabbed a bean from off her counter and plunged it through a crack in the floor. Then she reached over to her spinning wheel, which children all good witches have, and she commanded that the bean should grow, and so it did into a mighty beanstalk that touched the clouds themselves. The ground trembled, the forest cracked, and a very confused and very special goose flew right into the window and hit its head. Now, the wolf, not being particularly hungry at this point, decided that his pride would not allow him to let the grandmother escape. So he started climbing and climbing, and he was about halfway there when a 14-pound golden egg came hurtling down in the other direction and hit him square on the head. He fell all the way back down to earth. 
and decided at that point that it might be in his best interest to take a little nap. And it was about that time Little Red happened by. She was right upset that her grandmother's house had been replaced by a giant beanstalk. She knocked on it to make sure it was real and not just a cheap trick of those forest mushrooms. And real it was. So her eyes went up and up and up through her grandmother's house and was sitting there at the top of the beanstalk and she said, Grandma, how in the heck am I supposed to get up there? And the grandmother said, One second, dear, and she threw down a braid of her hair, a long, long braid that stretched all the way to the ground. Why, Grandma, what big hair you have, said Little Red. Don't I know it, said the grandmother. Suppose that growth spell must have gotten a tad out of hand. Come on up, dear. And so Little Red did. Now a soldier of the Emperor named Jack had been wandering down the high road when the beanstalk had grown there and he had gone to investigate. When he got there he saw the wolf dressed in the Emperor's colors and woke him with a shake. Your Eminence, are you alright? asked Jack. I am not, replied the wolf. There is a witch up there and she takes a hard line on her right to practice. She gave me this lump on my head. Now you know how I feel about witches. I put a bounty on her. You could be a rich lad if you were to bring us her head. The wolf held out the golden egg. Here's your advance. More where this came from if you succeed. And Jack, being afraid of heights, simply started hacking at the beanstalk with his sword in the hopes to bring it down. The wolf, having had enough conflict for the day, simply left him to his task. He chopped and he chopped and his eyes and his hands were dedicated solely to the daunting beanstalk and suddenly he heard a voice behind him. Hello, young man, what are you doing? There's a witch up there, and I intend to bring her down to earth. It looks like hungry work. Would you like something to eat? The elderly woman held out an apple, and Jack, being right famished, took a big bite, upon which he immediately fell asleep. Grandma, what did you do to him? said Little Red. Oh, just a little spell. He'll sleep there until he's woken by true love's kiss, or until he's eaten by wolves. Either way, he's out of our hair. He's quite handsome, though, isn't he? said Little Red. Child, don't you dare, replied the grandmother. I mean, it's true love if he wakes up. You did say so yourself. And so she kissed him, and he woke up and recognized the face of his one true love. And having found a golden egg and the love of his life all in one day, decided he'd be an idiot to risk it by trying to hunt down this witch. And they all lived happily ever after, except for the wolf, who was assassinated by a rival political faction who thought he was the emperor because, as you recall, people didn't change clothes much in those days. Now, the morals of this story are three. Don't trust wolves, don't eat random mushrooms, and remember to bring your grandparents food or you might never find true love. The end.